So, first uh, let us take a look at the list of materials that we need when we are going to create a aluminum sliding window and I have marked everything in different colors so that it is easier for me to explain and also I have some pieces here so I am going to cross reference it and then tell you about the things. Let me start with the bottom portion here which is the roller extrusion. What does it mean? So, this is the roller extrusion as you can see although these look almost similar from the outside here there is no roller part and here there are two roller parts that is because this is the roller we are talking about and this will go inside the window which will drive on these rails like this. So, this is the part which goes at the bottom over here and this is the only place that will be used. So, when you are calculating the materials you can understand that this alone for example if this is a 3 by 3 window just 3 feet is what I need. The next is this grey part on the outside and this is this extrusion and this is where the window will actually go and socket inside and as you can see this does not have any kind of a, a rail like this. If you buy this extrusion this will be used more because it is being used in all th three sides. So, you have to calculate 3 feet plus 3 feet 6 feet plus 3 feet 9 feet. So, to make a 3 by 3 window you need 9 feet of this grey material and just 3 feet of this red color material. Now that is understood let us talk about the actual window that we will be using. In this diagram I have described it as blue over here, yellow here and the green part over here. I will explain you about each part in detail. First let us talk about this green one. This is called as a H extrusion. Why is it a H extrusion? Because if you see this piece on this cross section it looks like a H. You see two lines and then one at the bottom. So, this side you can see it looks similar for 1, 2 and 3 all these 3 pieces whereas, this part is different that is because we will be actually seating this roller at the bottom portion. So, this will actually sit on this roller and it will ride and that is why this H extrusion is always at the bottom. So, here in the diagram you can see the H extrusion is always at the bottom. So, what is this blue one? The blue one is called as according to, to the picture here is called as A extrusion. That is because this looks like an A, an inverted A right now, but if you turn it then that is what it looks like an A. So, here the glass will go inside and you do not need anything to be fit on the other side and this is what we use over here and on this uh, side of the window over here. So, what is this yellow one? This is the extrusion which is called as an interlocking extrusion that is because we will be using two pieces of this. So, in this diagram although you can see that there is only one yellow line there are essentially two yellow lines because one for this window and one for this window and what they do is they interlock like this. So, that there is no bugs which can go from either side so they interlock. So, you see this gap here you will be cutting it another piece from this extrusion and then you will invert it so that the same piece goes and locks on this side. That is why this is called as an interlocking piece. So, when you go to a shop to buy the materials make sure that you always get a list like this where you know what materials you want and how many quantity of that you want and that way you will be able to economically buy things. One more thing is that all these extrusions come in 12 feet or 6 feet depending upon where you live. So, if you are making just one window then it will not be cost effective, but if you are going to make 2 or 3 windows then accordingly you can judge and buy things. After cutting I took uh, 4 pieces as you can see this is the bottom one with the roller and these 3 pieces without the roller and these go on the sides, this go on the top and this go on the bottom. So, I have cut the pieces together and I have just clamped it one on here and one on here and uh, in the corner I am going to put this kind of a bracket over here and then screw it from the inside. Second thing is here are those interchangeable uh, pieces which I told you which I cut and you can see how they interlock here and not let any mosquito or anything come inside and this is going to go 
in the center here like this of course i am not able to keep this inside because i have to cut off a small notch so i have to remove a, a little bit of material uh, from this space that way this channel will actually go and sit inside this is the side piece actually the a extrusion because it's in the a shape and because it doesn't have anything on the side you can see if i try to place it within the channel it goes in very easily now i will cut this notch uh, using an angle grinder and uh, then i will fit it here Now I can keep both at the halfway mark. Let me line this up at the halfway mark. This is a lock that you see in the sliding window, and uh, we have to fit it over here. You can see oh, I always did it here so that I don't make mistake in the new piece. When you buy this lock, try to get a template like this. This uh, they do have it in each boxes, but uh, they do not give it unless you are a dealer. And then keep the template like this, match with the line. and then mark all the holes and the cutouts mark karo so now we need to cut this out and we need to cut this out Here's the lock, and uh, here is where it goes and gets stuck. We need to put both of these two things together, and then uh, put it inside the frame. So this is how it will fit inside. And the reason that we have to put both of these things together is so that we get the distance. And then now we can measure the distance between these two points and these two points and confirm if it is equal. Then we can cut this A section over here and the H section over here, which will take the rollers. That's why fitting the lock and its counterpart is very important i have already done here and if i take this you can see that there is that second piece also which is attached to it i have kept the aluminum frames to see how the window is going to look on the top there is the a extrusion and on the bottom we have the h extrusion where the roller goes in and here i have already cut the hole so that the roller can go inside you can see how it is placed of course i need to screw it here you can see without the roller how it looks So that's what I'm going to do. Screw the rollers next. Next, I cut two pieces like this. So this is a cross section of the H one, and here I have done same for the A extrusion, and this is to mark the holes where I need to drill. we need to drill the hole from the top and also in the bottom because it has to match with the next part i have to use a screw like this which goes inside here but it should just uh, fit the head should actually fit here not here and because it, the head is uh, larger it's kind of difficult for it to go through and that's why i'm going to take it to the drill press where i have put a forstner bit over here and there i will drill the holes so that this one will drop through the bigger hole and go to the next one after cutting all those holes and everything now it is time to screw so uh, we have the button head uh, screw here and i have clamped this piece because when i drive the screw from that side it will kind of shake we'll initiate the threading by first uh, 
doing it a little bit so that the screw kind of gets hold in these holes and now you can see what I meant by the head has to go inside make sure that there is no gap between these two after screwing these two sides it's all uh, fixed it will take a little bit of practice for you to match the screw with the holes another material that I did not show you at the beginning is this one this is a rubber sleeve which actually houses the glass you can see when I close it uh, there's a enough space for the glass to go through so here is a glass these kind of windows will take at uh, least a uh, minimum of a maximum of 4 mm actually so this is how we will be fitting it it will go all the way around the glass so that it protects the glass from the aluminium extrusions just like the rubber padding there is uh, something called as like a weather coat of a, or a weather strip that we have to apply on all the channels so every channel actually has a spacing here you can see because it's very reflective i'm not able to show it to you but you can see it is here and it is on this side similarly it's here and this side this will kind of give a protection uh, for the window when it is sliding it will not let the aluminium and uh, aluminium rub uh, creating friction we have to do this on all the four sides so it's here we need to do at the bottom rollers on the side and on the top everywhere and also even in the interlocking place there is this uh, place where you need to put the felt This is the look of the window after uh, we have installed it. This is actually I am taking the video after two weeks, and I just screwed it using self-tapping screws directly to this uh, metal frames. You can see it on the side, on the top, here, and here as well. So, and I can just close it from the outside as well. We we'll try to give you a good look. Now it's totally weatherproof and there's noise isolation as well and here wherever there was gap I uh, put some polyurethane foam that kind of expands and then you cut it off because I have to do a total uh, painting I have just left it just like that and you can see in the corners they have all turned out to be really good there isn't much of a gap and this is where the interlocking comes which doesn't let any air or anything to even go through because I have put weather strips there also and here you can see how the rubber holds the glass I hope you like this video and uh, this helped you make the window of your own when you give it outside uh, they do charge a lot of money and if you know how to make your own windows this could actually become a business prospect too also, otherwise you can save a lot of money when you're building a home. I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for sticking around and I know this is a long one. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. 
and i hope to see you in the next video very soon until next time happy learning